Home Church family, it's time to continue our series about relationships. It's my most favorite thing that we talk about here. And I've been so enjoying all of the different conversations that we have had about relationships, both with God and with people and still chewing on that word from Sunday. So I hope that you're chewing on it with me as well. If not, strongly encourage you go back and check it out because I think it will bless you. And so today I wanted to share with you a couple of thoughts about relationships as we turn the corner and we've talked about how to experience healing in relationships. How do we experience growth? When I think about growth, that feels like a lot of pressure. How how do I make my relationships better and deeper and stronger? Like that just feels like a lot of pressure and we've already got a lot of pressure on us. And I always go back to what did Jesus say? How did he example it? What did he say? And By no means do I encourage you to walk down the street and just grab random people and tell them to come and follow you and be part of your crew for the next three and a half years. I do think we can see some amazing examples of our father doing some great things about how we can experience growth in relationships. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 19. And we're thrust into this story that is one of my favorite stories in the entire Bible for a lot of different reasons. And I get really talk about this story for a very long time. But we're introduced to this rich young ruler who comes to Jesus and asks him, how do I inherit eternal life? And we could stay there for a long time, just like, are you asking the right questions? Why is he asking that question? Shouldn't you know if you're doing the right things? But there was this opportunity where this man asked Jesus what to do to inherit eternal life. And here's a little extra something that I like to see about this. But He tells this man to do something that he told no one else to do. Sell everything that you have and follow me. He gave him an extra thing, an extra requirement, an extra standard, an extra line that he had to hit in order for him to inherit eternal life. And yet we always want to follow rules. Well, you get to do that. I can't do that. You shouldn't do that. It says we shouldn't do this. But what if God is asking something of you that he's not asking of anyone else? Anyway, let's go back to Matthew chapter 19. The man asked the question and Jesus says this. He says, honor your father and mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We've heard that scripture a ton. That the top two scriptures are to love your God and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. God and love and neighbors and connection and relationships. It is of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. And we've heard that quoted a ton. We've heard that teach a ton. There's more teaching on that than we could probably ever do in these few minutes with you. But just a few chapters later, Jesus takes it one step further beyond just loving yourself, beyond just loving your God, way beyond loving your neighbor when he tells us in in Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 you have heard it said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies but I say to you love your enemies pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven he's saying like don't just love the people that love you back don't just love your neighbor who you really dig don't just love the people who like all the same things that you like and all the Saints fans or all the people who like the same shows that you like or like to eat at the same restaurants that you like or go to the same church that you go to, but love the people who persecute you. Love the people who hate you. Pray for them so that you may be sons of the King. Two quick, very, very quick points about how we can experience growth. Number one is you have to have some self-awareness about who you are. Who am I? And what worth do I have? Because I cannot hold others more worthy than I hold myself. And then finally, treat others like they are worthy of your love. Treat others with a high worth, a high self of worth so that you can make them feel like they're worth a million bucks. The best thing that can be said about me is that I make people feel better about themselves, that I encourage them, that they feel better than what they think they are whenever they're around me because I represent the spirit of God. He's with me. He's in me. He's flowing out of me when I'm around people. Know your self-worth, understand what to hold yourself to and know that you are worth it and then treat others to the same self-worth that you think of yourself because those two things will help you experience growth both internally and externally with people. 
love your neighbors, but also love your enemies. And that's what makes us the son of God. Hey, we'll pick this up more on Sunday as Pastor Todd brings us a message all about experiencing growth and relationship. We can't wait till you see you then. God bless you. We're praying for you. If you need us, grab us on the app, but know that someone's in your corner. Someone believes in you. We're praying for you. Until next time, God bless you.